Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Video number three of my search for uh, wines, red, chillable red wines that can go with a spring lamb. Um, and um, common thread here is Bordeaux grape family. Uh, they are all uh, from southern France, apart from the final one, but we'll get onto the final one last, because that's the type of order I like to do. First one though, um, it is uh, the Moulin de Gassac, so this is from the uh, Master Domas Gassac uh, stable, um, Pays d'Euro, and it's Merlot 2011. Give it a whirl. It smells big, plump and plummy, big, plump and plummy. Um, but it also feels like there's, um, they've, uh, sometimes when, when people grow Merlot, they want to eradicate all edges of greenness. Uh, here they've got the ripe, juicy flavours, but they've still got that, uh, that refreshing herbal edge. It's not herbaceous, it's herbal. It's just adding a, a welcome uh, edge of something beyond ripe fruit. So there's a juiciness, but it feels like there's uh, life beyond juicy fruit here. Rich, rounded, juicy, plummy, um, but refreshing. Uh, it's got this, as I say, it's got this slightly green edge, um, and the fruit has no, never gone overripe. Um, there's still a perkiness there to it, so perky, dusty plums, as it were, and a bit of damson in there too. Um, nice wine, yeah, and uh, nice at this temperature. These, as I say, uh, said on the earlier videos, these have just come from a cool cellar and um, pretty nice at that temperature. Uh, I wouldn't mind half an hour in the fridge either. Um, next one is uh, still in southern France. This is Reserve Saint-Marc from uh, the Foncalier organisation, and it's a 2011 Cabernet Sauvignon uh, Pédoc. Well, I'm not sure quite what they've done here, but it feels like there's some quite nice fruit. But then someone has tried to be a little bit clever and oaked it. And I'm not sure whether that oak flavour, there's a slight dusty sawdust character, uh, whether it comes from a barrel or alternative forms of, um, of oak. Uh, I find that just uh, smothering the, um, the juiciness of the fruit. And there is this bit of clumsy vanilla that I'm not so sure about. I, I may be wrong, let's taste it. Now it's that vanilla and oak that really um, stand out and uh, take away really from, for me from the enjoyment of the fruit. Um, the Moulin de Gassac does it much more successfully. I'm, I'm not sure whether there's any oak on that, but um, um, for me a far better wine. This one feels, uh, it's okay, uh, but uh, I wouldn't be uh, crossing the street to, uh, uh, to have another glass of it. Let's see whether I can say I'd want to cross the street for the wine number three. This, so this is Domain Mas Barrow. Mas means farmhouse. Um, so Cabernet Franc, Pays du Gard, and lovely picture of the bridge uh, at uh, Nîmes there. And um, anyway, um, what vintage? 2011, but weighing in at 15% alcohol. Will that poke out? Let's give it a whirl and see. I'd say it's a bit pongy at the moment. It feels uh, that, uh, I mean, I've just uh, unscrewed the screw cap and feels like a wine that really needs to uh, calm down and uh, get its hair together. It feels like it's just got out of bed and it's having, uh, it's got a bit of sleep in its eyes. Um, it's, uh, so I smell that, um, that slightly awkward, sulfury uh, bit of reduction. Maybe is there, that, that has that sulfur uh, found its way into the wine, never to be removed. Uh, I'll keep swirling and, um, and then I'll have a taste and I will be back directly. It does feel a bit awkward at the moment. What I'm noticing is that that, that tight, sulfury character and then this big, plump, tar-like uh, core of warm fruit flavour. Um, it, um, as, as, as something that uh, to be served at this temperature, uh, I don't find it too successful. Unless, um, it could be that um, it, what it needs to do is, is having a decant and then, I don't know if you, if you ever do this, decant something and then shove it in the fridge. It, it sounds like, why not do that? Try it with some wines if, they, if they're being a, a little bit awkward, uh, uh, but then they get a bit, bit too warm. Try it. Um, so I might, I, I might come back to that one. Um, certainly um, of those uh, still wines, the uh, uh, Moulin de, de Gassac is, has been the most successful. Yes, I say of the still wines because wine number four is a sparkler. Um, and uh, this is where we're not in France, we're in Australia. Uh, so this is Grant Burge. Um, and it's uh, Shiraz Cabernet Method Traditionnel, and um, I think it's all from the Barossa. I'm not sure it doesn't doesn't say on here. Oh yeah, it does. Barossa, weighing in at 14%, so less alcohol than the one before. Now sparkling red wines 
Um, Australia has a, uh, uh, a long tradition of them. Some of the most incredible uh, aged Australian wines I've had have been uh, uh, Old Sepult's Sparkling Shiraz. I remember having a 1967 and a 1946. Um, that was quite a, quite a long time ago, maybe, maybe mid-90s, but it was amazing how fresh they were. Uh, because what you've got everything there that... Uh, well, not quite everything, but a lot of things there that will, will help a wine age. So you've got alcohol, uh, you've got tannin, uh, you've got sugar, because uh, in order to, uh, if you're doing a sparkling wine and you've got tannin in there, you need something to, to balance it. So they, they add quite a lot of uh, dosage. And uh, just before bottling, it, it, what it is, is they do, it does a secondary fermentation in the bottle to give it the bubbles, and then they shove something in there to add sweetness. What some of them do is they buy old, um, old uh, 40 find wines and uh, and, and uh, liqueur the, the, their wines with that. So here at Shiraz Cabernet, uh, I do find these wines really do need uh, quite a lot of age before they uh, before they lose their. They're, they're almost a bit tigger-like when they're young. Is this going to be one of those that's a bit tigger-like? Give it a whirl. Well, fascinating this. Um, it's um, I, I'm not sure how old the wine is here. I look at the colour of it, and it's it's certainly not a brash youngster. Um, it's 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 quite mellow. Uh, so there's the soft, mellow, leathery character that you get in uh, in old Barossa reds. Uh, but then there's also something uh, I don't know whether they um, uh, whether they've softened it with something that it almost feels like they've had a dollop of Moscato in there because there's this soft, grapey roundness as well. Uh, and um, it smells like it's going to have um, quite a lot of flavour, uh, but not so much that uh, it's going to overwhelm you, which is the problem with some of them when you get them too young. Fascinating style. It's, it doesn't feel like they've got... I was talking earlier about the tannin. feels here like it wasn't a particularly tannic wine that they, um, they worked on in the first place. So there's a juiciness, there's a roundness, there's this mixture of mellowness and fruit freshness. I don't know whether they, uh, the idea of having it as a non-vintage blend is they've got a bit of old wine and they've blended in some younger wine, which may even have been white wine. Uh, but there is, yeah, it's almost like as if someone's put some Moscato or, or Viognier in there to, uh, uh, to, to round it out. And... Um, as a, uh, uh, it's strange. I, I, if you if you overchill these these reds, it's the tannin that pokes out. I don't think there's heaps of tannin here, but at this temperature, it's looking really nice. Um, and um, I uh, well, I think I'm, I might have to uh, rather quickly go out and find some lamb and uh, see whether whether this goes well. Uh, in terms of favourites of the wines, uh, I think it's. Um, that probably the second. I thought the Moulin de Gassac was was really really good, uh, and uh, both of those I'd be very happy to sit down and um, munch with me spring lamb lunch. Hope you will too. See you soon.